Hey everyone, Ron here from Woodmax. Today we're going to show you a video on assembly and installation of our WM series backhoes. For the assembly, you will need a pair of needle nose pliers, a 13 millimeter wrench, a 19 millimeter wrench, 19 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, either a ratchet or a small impact, a crescent wrench for your bigger bolts and hydraulic lines, and you possibly could use a dead blow hammer just to help some of the pins. So when you receive the backhoe, all of these components will be packaged up on the pallet. Once you lay them out, uh, you'll have an extra bucket if you ordered one. You will have the grapple for your thumb, the stationary top link for the backhoe, two stabilizer legs, your hydraulic pump, uh, your seat, your manual will be attached to that. Parts box, it has all the extra components for your top link and your seat hardware, and your suction hose for the backhoe. First step is going to be installing your stabilizer legs. So you're going to want to remove these two pins, removing the clip, the washer, pulling the pins. And now you're going to install the stabilizer leg. Stabilizer leg goes in the lower pin. Hydraulic cylinder goes in the upper pin. All right, located inside the backhoe here are going to be your two hydraulic lines for your stabilizer leg cylinder. Go ahead and pull them out and set them up out of your way. Then we're going to go ahead and install the stabilizer leg into the lower pin. So just go ahead and slide it in. Start your pin. And then the stabilizer leg goes in. So you're going to want to pick up on the stabilizer leg until you can line up the holes and slide your pin in. So once the two pins are in, the stabilizer leg will come down to the ground. Just be careful, it is quite heavy. Go ahead and reinstall your washers on each pin. And your cotter pins. Once you get your cotter pins in, just grab it with a pair of pliers. Secure the pin in place. Repeat the process on the bottom. Once you get this leg all assembled on the backhoe, go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. Now we're going to hook up the hydraulic hoses to the stabilizer legs and go ahead and follow the orientation provided on the green tag when you receive the backhoe. All right, this will show you the orientation of the hoses. The hoses are labeled on the ends, look very closely. Sometimes they can be hard to see, but this orientation is from sitting on the operator's platform of the backhoe. You can see that 6N goes to the top of the cylinder, 6F goes to the bottom of the cylinder, on the right side, 23 on top, 24 on the bottom. Once you figure out the orientation of your hoses, go ahead and remove these two plastic caps with a pair of pliers. There will be a plug in the end of the hose, so just go ahead and unspin that. These are JIC fittings. They do not require any type of sealant. Just make sure you get it on nice and straight to start it. And go ahead and snug these up with a wrench, 19 millimeter. Once you get your hoses connected on this side, move to the other side, connect your other hoses. All right, next step is going to be to install your grapple. You will have to remove these two pins. Uh, one bolt in each pin, 13 millimeter. On the lower pin here, there are two bushings, so make sure you hang on to those. All right, when installing the grapple, make sure that you orientate the pin correctly to line up with the bolt hole. All right, so now you're going to put the grapple onto the thumb cylinder. A little tip for you, if the alignment of the rod is off just a little bit, take your pin, slide it in, and you can manipulate that rod so it's straight. All right, so grab the grapple, pick it up, go ahead and slide your pin in. Again, making be aware of the orientation of the bolt. Put one of the bushings onto the pin. Line up your cylinder as you pick up.
Go ahead and install your second bushing on the other side. When fully seating the pin, make sure you line up the hole in the pin to the hole on the grapple before you put it all the way through. Go ahead and tighten up your two bolts, 13 millimeter. All right, so now we're gonna start pre-fitting our stationary top link. Uh, you'll have two connecting rods, uh, two M20 bolts for those, uh, a large M20 bolt with two washers uh, and a bushing. These will all be found in the hardware pack. The top link during shipping is orientated this way. We do have to flip these two brackets around. So go ahead and remove the bolts. And you will notice there's two different size bolts here. For right now, temporarily, just put the bolt in. Shorter bolt goes towards the backhoe. All right, so now we're going to slide the top link into place. Uh, you will need this long bolt with these two washers, nut and the bushing. Go ahead and remove one washer and the nut and the bushing. Set those up top for right now. Go ahead and grab this, slide this in place here. Once you get it started, you do have to get that bushing in there. And again, do not tighten at this time. This is just temporary. All right, now we're going to install the connecting weldments. You will see that there, this hole is closer to the edge. This hole is a little bit further away. We want that longer side at the backhoe. We have multiple holes on the backhoe here for the orientation. I'm going to go ahead and use the center hole for now. That usually works for most tractors. But again, this is temporary until we get the tractor backed into it. So you will need that one bolt there, the M20, with two washers and lock nut. Install the other one on the other side. All right, so now we're going to connect the connecting weldments to the top link. So when you pick this up, you want to get it about as parallel as you can with the ground. Go ahead and pick up one of your connecting weldments and line it up to the closest hole that you can find. Go ahead and start your bolt. All right, now on the other side. Again, leave this loose. This is just all temporary until we back the tractor in. So now we're going to connect the pump, uh, the suction line that came with the backhoe earlier, and then the supply line is tucked away in the backhoe here, so you're simply going to pull that out. Again, all the hoses have plugs and covers on them. So you're going to want to go ahead and connect these to the pump. All right, then install the suction line on the other port for the pump. Then the suction line gets connected to the tank right here. And go ahead and tighten all the fittings. So now that the pump's installed, it's time to fill with hydraulic fluid. Uh, you will need a funnel. Hydraulic fill is here. Uh, you're going to fill the tank up all the way initially, and then once we run the backhoe, you will have to add some additional 
roughly six to seven gallons. Also included in the hardware pack is a PTO extension, which will bolt right onto the PTO pump. So you're simply going to take the bolt out, and there is a spacer in there. You're going to go ahead and slide this through the back of the pump. Then you're going to go ahead and slide the spacer in the hole, and the bolt will line up with the hole in the PTO extension. Go ahead and tighten this up, 9 16 So now that the pump's all set, it's time to back the tractor in to get the pump on to power the backhoe. This is also a good time to set the width of your lift arms to correspond with the backhoe. Also, set your lift arms so they're about parallel with the ground. All right, so now we got the tractor back in very close to the backhoe without touching. You're going to go ahead and take your PTO pump, slide it onto the splines. There is a collar you pull back, slide the pump on, it'll lock into place. Now that the pump's installed, we have to put the uh, check chain on. So we're going to just fasten this to the eye bolt here provided. And it also comes with this clip on this end. We're simply going to take the chain, wrap it around the lift arm, and install the clip. It's now time to start the tractor and use the hydraulics of the backhoe to lift it up to match the lift arms on the tractor. First thing you're going to do is once you get it started, you're going to relieve the pressure off the boom, and you're going to have to pull this pin. Once you get the tractor running, backhoe's charged up, relieve the pressure, take this pin right out. Go ahead and remove the two pins, fastening it to the crate. Repeat on the other side. Okay, so you can see we got the tractor backed in now. You can see the angle the backhoe is on. So we use the stabilizer legs to lift this end of the backhoe in order to back the tractor right in, keeping the three-point lift arms parallel with the ground. Now we're going to use the boom to bring the back hole up in order to fit our top link. So now that you have the three-point hitch all connected, it's time to mount the seat. All right, so locate the seat bracket provided in the hardware pack. This is going to get held on with four bolts. Also in the hardware pack, eight washers, four nuts. Once you have all the bolts installed, go ahead and tighten. These will be 19 millimeter. So now that the seat bracket's mounted to the backhoe, we're going to mount the seat. Uh, you will have to pull this pin, take this pin out, and remove this knob. When installing the seat, you can see there's three different options here for the front to back of the seat. Um, we're gonna use the middle hole. That seems about right for average. Once you get the pin through, go ahead and put your washer on and slide your locking pin in. Then go ahead and install the knob in the corresponding hole that lines up here. Uh, you can also take this out. If you leave the back hole out, you can flip the seat up, keep the rain off. The seat also is adjustable front to back by grabbing this little lever here, pulling it, and go front and back, lock in place. Now that the backhoe is all complete, we can go ahead and run through all the motions of the backhoe just to work all the air out. We want to make sure that we do remove this pivot pin here. There is a hairpin clip on the bottom. Make sure you pull that pin. So now that you've got 
a backhoe all installed, you've run it, got hydraulic fluid to all the cylinders, all the functions work, you're ready to go. All you got to do is top the hydraulic oil off. You want it about an inch from the top of the tank. Thank you for watching, everybody. Please like and subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them down below. Stay tuned for future videos.